Hi friends, it's Monica and today let's talk about 5 star book predictions. These are all the books I'm predicting to be 5 star reads and most of these books are 2021 releases last year but some of them have been on my TBR for quite some time. This first book I want to mention is part of a series I have mentioned previously and it's the Ember Quartet and the book I'm talking about is the fourth and final installment in the series. It's called A Sky Beyond the Storm by Saba Tahir. The first book in the series is called Ember in the Ashes and if you haven't heard about this series before, I'm going to give you a quick description about it. Ember in the Ashes takes place in a brutal world where the scholars are taken over by the Martial Empire. Many people live in poverty and even some are enslaved. We meet Leila, a scholar who infiltrates to the Black Cliff Academy after the marshals have taken her brother captive. From that point on, we follow Leila, who I love, and even though she is infiltrating a enemy's academy, she's still scared while doing so and that shows her human emotions. And we also have another perspective in the first book that we follow of Elias, who is from the Martial Empire, and we see how brutal that side of this kingdom is. And with both Elias and Layla, they are both quite strong characters and we follow their journey throughout the books. But in this final book, I'm really hoping for more fast-paced action, emotional arcs, and I want to be surprised how this book series will end. So let's hope this is a 5-star read. My next 5-star book prediction is a book I mentioned in the last video. It is A House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas. And again, this is the second book in the Crescent City series. And based off the first book, House of Earth and Blood, I really loved this world. And aside from the slow start in the beginning of world building, once you get past that hurdle, it was really easy to read the rest of the book because then you're introduced to all the characters and as with Sarah's characters, I really enjoy reading about them. So in the series, we are following Bryce Quinlan, who's a half human, half fae. She's witty, intelligent, and she gets roped into a murder investigation that she does not want to be involved in at all. But during that investigation, she meets Hunt Athler, who is the lead on that case, and they develop their own relationship along the way. And in the first book, I really enjoyed this mystery element that Bryce was involved in. And I hope we get more of that in this second book coming up. And Crescent City itself is also explored quite in depth, I would say. And it is an urban fantasy setting, which is a nice change of pace. But it did feel a bit formulaic in that Bryce and Hunt would be visiting every quarter in the city to meet this new fantastical creature that we we're being introduced to. And it's like, oh, there's a clue there to help us solve the murder but then it's like okay <laughs> i know in like a new fantasy world you're trying to introduce all the places and characters that would be really prominent figures in the future books and in the plot line but i just wanted to see less of jumping around from place a to b to c to meet whoever who's there who's conveniently giving out the answers besides from that i love this series so much and I do hope to see more action, more taking down of the government, and more romantic tension between our main pair. So let's see how it all goes when it releases in just a few weeks. My next book pick is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I was hoping to get to this book last year, but I didn't. So it's on my list for five star book predictions this year and with Taylor Jenkins Reid, I really loved her previous books that I've read which is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Dizzy Jones and the Six and I rated both of those books five stars and I really like how her take is on historical fiction stories and they're really interesting and I do hope to be blown away by Malibu Rising. Malibu Rising is set in 1983 and it takes place over the course of one night in the infamous Riva mansion. So the Rivas are a famous family and quite talented. So we have Nina who's a talented surfer and supermodel and then we have brothers Jay and Hud, one of which is a renowned surfer and another is a famous photographer. And lastly they have their beloved little sister Kit. If you're invited to the Rivas end of summer party it means you're part of the exclusive crowd but with any family you have your own fair share of problems and 
by the end of this night, the mansion is up in flames. I think Malibu Rising will have a shocking twist and a really good lesson for the readers, but I really do hope I will read another Taylor Jenkins read book, a five star. Okay, going back to a fantasy book, and this one is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. And for this book, I've been hearing so much about it on Bookstagram, Booktube, and I have still not gotten around to it and the sequel's coming out this year. So I really, really want to get to it this year. So what caught my attention about Legendborn, besides from the hype, is that it's about secret societies. And this secret society has members called Legendborn who are actually descendants of King Arthur's knight. And there's a magical war approaching. So in this book, we are following 16-year-old Brie Matthews. Brie is in an early college program for gifted high schoolers, but on her first night on campus, she witnesses a magical attack. Of a flying demon who is sucking out energies from people and as it turns out a secret society of legendborn hunts down these demons and monsters and Brie herself ends up having magical powers and she has a more personal connection than she first thought to this secret society since i do love the formula of the old age legend retelling magical powers secret societies and urban fantasy settings so i'm really excited for this one another book from last year that i didn't get to is six crimson cranes by elizabeth Lim. this one i just really love the cover and i've read the description so many times but i still have not gone around to it but i'm still predicting that it will be five stars this one is centered around shirori who is the only princess of kiara she holds a secret that can get her killed and that is which she carries forbidden magic within her blood her stepmother notices the magic and banishes shirori from the kingdom and she also turns shirori's brothers into cranes and gives her an ultimatum to not speak of her holding this forbidding magic or her brothers will be killed one by one. So I really do like books that have the trope of conspiracies and the characters need to fight to find out the truth. So I think this one will be right up my alley and I do think it will be a five star read. So my next pick is from a YA sci-fi series and this is the third book in the series and it is Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. So like with practically every Brandon Sanderson book I've read, I've rated five stars and with the series, it was no different. I did rate uh, Skyward, which is the first book and then Starsight, the second book in this series, five stars as well. So I do expect to really love Cytonic. In Skyward, we are following Spensa who is living on an alien planet that is being bombarded by attacks from aliens. Spencer wants to be a pilot, but with the past history of her father being labeled as a coward, that proves for some difficulties of her entering flight school. She studies hard and she does make it into flight school. And one day she comes across an abandoned cavern with a ship inside, but the ship is more alive than Spencer first thought. So with Skyward and with Starside, it was really easy to read, meaning that the world itself and all the characters and sci-fi concepts weren't really hard to grasp and that's one of the reasons why I love Brandon Sanderson. His writing is really accessible for everyone and even though this is young adult, even with his adult fantasy books like the Stormlight Archive, it's really easy to get into the world and learn about the world that he has crafted and in the case of fantasy world of the magical system that he creates. Usually the sci-fi aspect can be intimidating but for me I absolutely loved. We have alien space mysteries as well and we also have growth of our character Spensa which I really do appreciate. So following the second book in the series, I really hope we get more encounters with aliens and learning more of who Spencer really is. I think I might need a refresher on books one and two, but I don't think that would be an issue going into this book. I do really love this cover as well. I love the pink. I don't have many pink books, so that also is another positive thing about this book already. This next book prediction is a adult urban fantasy and it's Jade City by Fonda Lee and this is another book that I've heard people rave about and love so I really want to hop on the train and see what it's about. Jade City is about two crime syndicate families who control the island of Kekon. On this island they produce rare magical jade that can grant you superhuman abilities and we're following the Call family who is considered to be a green bone clan 
and that this is because in their past generations they had jade wearing magical warriors who would protect the island but now the island is more modernized and the call family helps upkeep this uh, the island and city through commerce and construction but the kicker is the calls and their rivals are on the brink of starting an clan war that may risk everyone on Kekon Island. I first heard this book from uh, Reagan from Pro's Project and she makes great book recommendations. So with this one, I'm really excited for the intense politics, intergenerational blood feuds, and magical kung fu. And I do think I really love this. So another adult fantasy series that I think I will love is The City of Brass by S.A. Chakaborty. From what I could gather, City of Brass is about a young con artist, Nahring, who has the miracle gift of healing and this is taking place on the streets of 18th century Cairo. But one day she accidentally summons Dara who is a jinn warrior and Dara speaks of a legendary city that's made fully of brass and that has mythical creatures called Devabad. Nahri decides to enter this brass city but her entrance might spark a war among six jinn tribes. So in this book there is corruption, brewing war, court politics and schemes so I think this fantasy will be a good one. So the next book I have here is a young adult mystery thriller and it also has indigenous representation and it's The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. The protagonist in this book is Donna's Fontaine. She is 18 years old, biracial, and she doesn't fit in either her hometown or the Ojibwe reservation. She dreams of studying medicine until her mother falls ill. She meets Jamie, a charming hockey recruit who is on her brother's team, but there is something not right about him. Dawn is then witness a murder that then launches her into the middle of a criminal investigation. She agrees to go undercover and that leads to a wild investigation of her own. This book speaks about community, what it means to be a strong Anishinaabe way, which means a strong Ojibwe woman and how things aren't what they seem on the surface. I haven't read many books with indigenous representation or characters and I hope to learn more about that when I get to this one. So my next and my last prediction for five star reads is Ace of Space by Ferda Abike Adenimi. So this one is a YA contemporary thriller and it's described as Get Out meets Gossip Girl. This takes place in a private academy and we're following Devon and Chiamaka. They're both two top students of their private academy school and they are both contenders to be Valid Victorian. But once the nomination for a Valid Victorian are announced, they both start getting strange and mysterious text messages from someone called Aces. And Aces is threatening to reveal their deepest, darkest secrets unless they both follow what they say to do. It quickly turns into a dangerous game and with their future son online, how far can aces go? And with thrillers, it's pretty vague, the description, which I do enjoy going into them. And I do believe this one will be a five-star read for me. And with thrillers, it doesn't take that much to impress me. I just need to be shocked and I don't need to be able to predict the ending. So I do like to be surprised with thrillers. So I think this one will be a great one. So those were all my five star book predictions and I do hope to get to them all this year. Thanks so much for watching. Comment down below what is a five star book prediction for you. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below and ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. See you all soon.